Alright, it's a new day on the planet today. Woke up alive again. Go figure. What am I going to do with this day being alive? Well, what am I going to do? I'm going to get a lot of fellow brave, honest people heard. I'm get caught up in some stuff. I actually cleared off my desk this morning. Unbelievable. It only took 10 minutes, but it took a week to decide to do it. <laughs> oh boy. What else is new? Not much is new, I don't think. Probably is, but I was just leaving the house this morning to come to the shop, and Sarah was on the uh, the page where people um, basically need things. She said that somebody actually put a pot of frickin' leftover spaghetti sauce, a photo of it on there, and people were reaching out saying they'd come and take it. Holy shit. You know, I can be walking out the door with a little pep in my step, and then I hear something like that, and it just takes me to frickin' tooth grind. Tooth grind. But anyway, Sarah's gonna be doing her shop again tomorrow. Um, and she's gonna get a pile of people fed. All from the membership in this channel. They're gonna get them fed. Enough of the bullshit. Good God. Okay, I'll try to bite my lip. Remember, pass this on to anybody that has ears. There is not one acceptable excuse today for people to be hungry or homeless. Not one. Nada. Nothing. Nothing. I wonder how many people billionaires feed or house. I wonder. God, I mean, I get, we're going to a few dollars on freaking YouTube and instantly, instantly throw it down to feeding hungry kids. I can't imagine what I'd do if I had a billion dollars. 
Actually, I'd probably replace, I'd probably hire a hit team to go out and clean up the government. I'd probably do that first. <laughs> that would, that would probably uh, benefit the people f a lot more than trying to just feed them and keep up with evil bastards, wouldn't it? It'd instantly turn everything around. Now, what do we got? Who do we got? We got a lot. We got a lot of people here. Went back in the archives, not the archives. I went back in other folders to find more voices, and I found a bunch. I think this one's might be recent, and there's some other ones that have been waiting. Coming right up. Hi, Steve. Been a long time following your channel, even before you started on this subject. And again, I want to thank you and your family for all that you do for both us and now your community. Thank you for the kind words. We need more people to take on this kind of challenge. We try to do what we can here in our community. Please, everyone, help where or however you can in yours. I'm hoping everyone here also recognizes how much time and effort you and your family must spend working out this. Please thank Sarah and give Ruby a treat from me. I'd love to book one of your fishing trips, but have not been able to put it together from my end as of yet. Hope and I maybe can help a little when it comes to some of the questions regarding the electronic devices and some possible answers. First, some background. In the past, my education, hobbies, and work, we've revolved around electronics and electrical things. I have designed, built, and repaired more things than I care to remember. Anyway, enough said there. First, we need to know that most everything in the electronic world breaks down to resistance, capacitance, inductance, and what is called an NP junction. NP junction stands for a negative bias semiconductor fused to a positive bias semiconductor. This is the, the device slash principle that makes up basic diodes, transistors, etc. Newer visions of these components make up all electronic devices today. I know, blah, blah, blah. The reason this is important is that you can interrupt the operation of these components. Any electrical device would stop working. Now, let me read that again. I know, blah, blah. The reason this is important is that if you can interrupt the operation of these components, any electronic device would stop working. To the user, the device will appear to be dead. Some of the more common ways to interrupt electronics would be by using a strong magnetic field, MF, and slash or an electromagnetic field, EMF, or electromagnetic pulse, EMP. These can all interrupt the operation of electronic components given the right conditions. All right, you got my attention. Because you're not saying drain, you're saying interrupt. We got a lot of people had their shit go dead and come back to life in the woods. I'm sure you've all heard about how an EMP bomb going off in the atmosphere above a location can and will interrupt and possibly damage communication and most everything relying on electronics. This could include things like phones, cameras, computers, vehicles. The electronic, the electrical grid, and more. I should add here that radiation is also a form of EMF. Now think about the possibility of an EMF or EMP event that could temporarily interrupt the operation of the electronics in given device. Using a trail camera as an example, there are separate circuits within this device for the camera, motion sensor for, for infrared lighting, memory system, power supply, battery monitoring, monitoring, battery charging, and more. An EMF or EMP event could stop the operation of one or all of these circuits within the trail camera. My thoughts is that if these beings could somehow generate and or direct a source of EMF or EMP, this could interrupt the operation of or even damage any electronic device, if interrupted in this way, the device would appear to be dead. Note here that the batteries would be fine as long as the circuit wasn't affected or damaged in a way that it would drain the batteries after a fault. 
This could then account for the device coming back to life after the event was over. Think about some of the statements made by the club. The food was gone, but there were no pictures on the game camera. The game camera was moved, but there were no pictures of it when it happened. The vehicle wouldn't start, but it finally did start and we got away. The cell phone or camera was dead, but it started working again later. My cell phone lost its memory. Just thinking. This is all just a thought or hypothesis to spark conversation. Just another note to add to my past emails. In my, in my later years, I started to use a truck camper when I could, as it got harder to get going in the mornings. The camper also allowed us to not worry about the late season cold as much. Over the years, I've had two occasions when the camper was, was slapped hard. And another one, the unit was rocked slash shook fairly violently. All these events happened later at night. Never found or saw anything around the outside to explain the cause after any of these events. Something to add to my book of that the hell. Book of what the hell, I think you meant. Thank you again, Steve, for all you do. Please only share my first name. I could care less. But I have to think about my family and friends. Sincerely, Larry. P.S. Just for you, Steve. Oh. All right. All right. Gotcha, man. That's a big appreciation for that email. It's a big uh, chunk of knowledge passed on to us. Very interesting to me. I have a very lengthy history using trail cameras the length of North America myself. And uh, when I did have, do you remember when I, we shared what we got here. It was a long one, but I might go for it. Um, when I videotaped the ground stomped down, all those baby trees snapped off. And some of them grabbed five at a time, snapped, uprooted, and put it in a stack. Like just put down and then my trail camera which was about eight feet in the air was spun on the tree to face the next camera beside it one foot away from it and no that did not catch a picture of being moved <laughs> coincidentally what else i have had trail cameras freeze up in the winter and come back to life in the spring in the mountains that i've left all year after after the fall and they seem to have died around i think one time they died around february March and they came back to life in April and then kept on functioning properly when all the deer started migrating back up. But anyway, that's very interesting. Very interesting. Thank you so much for that. That's actually coincidentally, somebody emailed me today. Some business asked me if I wanted to collaborate. I get those emails every day with a new trail camera. So I basically emailed them back and I said, I'm a tough nut to crack. If your camera sucks, the public's going to know about it. <laughs> I've used every camera there is to the point that not one trail camera out there triggers every time. I have to leave three cameras together on the same stretch of the same trail. I need to know what's walking on to be confident that I'm basically po po probably catch everything walks down it, but not every camera, not any camera brand triggers every time something goes in front of it. I can guarantee you that's fact. Anyway. This is titled an article. This is from a little bit ago from our friend Robert Duvall, very intelligent guy who's done a lot of digging for like 30 years and he knows a lot. I don't think this will read well for your audience. You can make that the final determination, but it's wordy and a little complicated. I wrote this two days ago. I'm surprised I squeezed it out given all the other things on my plate and here you go. All right, I'm going in. The paradox of the apparent intersection of hybrids with humans occurring today, the study of Sasquatch and all the other large bipedal animal hybrids has really been intensified in recent decades, becoming an obsession with some, but for the most part has been lacking specific methods other than personal verification through experience generally. I've learned through a lot of trial and error that in order to obtain contextual perspective regarding odd objects, subjects such as UFO or Sasquatch, one absolutely needs to extensively consult the historical records and acquire a knowledge of the actual history of those records in order to know what to take in and what to apply caution to. Without this historical application, one is stuck and always will be. Speculation then fills the void and theories persist but go unproven. Various camps are defended and progress is stunted. 
my side versus your side. I began that personal verification process myself, specifically of Sasquatch, on a fluke, but primarily just as a means of getting myself out into the forests for exercise, beginning in early 2017. It was never even a remote idea to go off and study this matter. I was done with all that stuff. I previously spent 20 years studying UFO, learning the absolute importance of corroboration using history. Having done that and seemingly unable to convince others to see the importance of applying history, I retired from the endeavor. As I started this motivation for exercise in the forests, I immediately got way more than I had bargained for. <clears throat> Excuse me. As it became starkly apparent to me that they were easy to find, I closed the circle down to a manageable area, eventually learning that mountain trips were completely unnecessary in Washington State. I got down to within a five-mile radius of my house, where errands and grocery store trips could include an outing. But to get to that point, I need to convey what prompted that level of interest. Within a few short months from my first outing, I stumbled across footprints that I had some knowledge of, but it never crossed my mind it could exist within a mile and a half of my house, or even in Washington State. I studied these extensively, as they were quite fresh, and I was extremely disturbed by the discovery. I tried to debunk my own ideas, but came to a dead end. These were unmistakably dogmen. And the story that was front and center for me in that moment was the land between the lakes incident. Gruesome. I'm standing there in fear and dread, staring at these prints and other evidence that was disturbing. Like a large stick shoved into a burrow, apparently attempting to extricate that animal for food. When I realized starkly that this was a crossroads moment, I either got out and stopped this now. Well, sorry. I either get, got out and stopped this now while I was truly uninitiated and go about regular business, or I go back to my ancient studies and begin that mind bending journey yet again, as if what I'd already been through wasn't enough. One thing I have begun to accept about myself after retirement is that I have little self-control when it comes to these kinds of problems that to me need solving. I hear you. <laughs> so I went home and came up with a starting point, a document I came across around 2007, but did not at that time understand or have anything I could apply it to. It was not related to the UFO studies at all that I could tell. But now, within these circumstances, this different area of study, it might have significance. I got it out. Dead Sea Scroll, the Book of Giants. And as I poured over it, I came across a passage that I had not seen previously that was directly applicable, and without any stretch at all to get it there. I never in my life had something so direct and so specific corroborating my experience the day before. Often I would spend years looking for corroboration. I was stunned and in a state of disbelief. From that moment on, I thought that after all of the years I had tried to understand UFO within deep history, that I had been looking at it wrong, and that I might actually gain on deep history through studying this matter. So I decided to continue my outings to understand it better, to continue to read encounters because those are solid pieces of data in themselves to continue historical studies and to find ways to verify it because without that verification, we all, all we have is informed speculation that appears to corroborate with historical records. A few items that have come to me were language studies and genetic studies. At the time, I knew zero about either, and so I was staring Sorry, so I was starting from scratch. Eventually, I came across people who were deeply involved in these studies. I have come up to a reasonable place of comprehension regarding genetic studies just to assimilate the information and applications that were coming my way. I am not now, nor ever will be, claiming to really fully understand genetic science, but those close to me who know it well spend the time to straighten me out when I have gone sideways. And for that, I am forever grateful. As I was doing field work, I realized I had to separate what took place out in the deep wilderness with the activities closer to my home, which was an 
urban environment, but with a lot of forested watershed areas that drained into the Puget Sound. I was certain that the behaviors would necessarily be different between the two environments. Due to the ease of access, I went through a two-year period of studying them in the urban environment. I uncovered a lot of useful information. Much of it goes completely unnoticed by the general population. There could be fresh footprints in the mud at the edge of a baseball field near woods, and people might see it, but they would not, but they would not go to the next step with it. I saw Sasquatch structures being used to dry clothes by homeless people and their in-woods dwellings, not structures, that are nice and dry being used by all kinds of passerbys. That includes homeless people. Woods get used for human drug consumption. I've seen the remains of those drugs and paraphernalia brought back into the Sasquatch dwelling, and it was not by humans. I conclude nothing. I just observe and accumulate data and looking for patterns. In downtown Seattle, I found unmistakable glyphs that could not be incidental. So many can, but certain types of glyphs are not incidental or natural. Also in Seattle parks that are visited by hundreds every day, it doesn't matter. For me, the question is, how can this be? What is going on that brings this condition to the fore? And this part does not escape me at all. Why now? I'm going to say something here that many will find questionable and, and egregious, but I'm willing to go there. I've been researching matters for 30 years that are of deep concern and have implications for the human condition. I'm looking at these matters within the context of the history that is presented to us during our upbringing to adulthood. This disconnect between our history views as taught and the records I have myself seen and corroborated with matters like Sasquatch is staggering. I want to look at who is deeply involved with our history and think about their roles and stake in it all. I realize this is not just one institution like governments, but several that have, for whatever reason, chosen to present history a certain and, some, and somewhat unified way. It gets into competition of narratives as well, some of it apparently intentional. But that is not covered here. The true history is highly blurred out. Without a doubt. I'm not suggesting conspiracy between the organizations, but the development of or presentation of a combined view slash paradigm that for a long period was somehow lost on almost everyone in the public sphere. Then as some become aware of the discontinuity of this paradigm slash historical narrative or a view and pointed out these discontinuities, others began to look into the matter as well. After many decades of this review of records, so much has been exposed that it is no longer debatable that these discontinuities were hidden, whether out of ignorance or intentionally. This next statement is not going to set well. The one institution that has done this with the longest is the Catholic Church. Absolutely agreed. That is not to say they were the first. The records of Babylon were massive distortions of the earlier Mesopotamian records. And this was done for power and political gains. Expediency. By overzealous leaders. But the Catholic Church is the longest lived and most influential institution in the world. The church is a body of people worshipping the same beliefs to the same God, not an organization and entity that has political power and influence. The Vatican was born as just that. It has enjoyed very high global political influence since its inception. Certainly it had religious influence as well, but no one reading this can say it is pure religion and never abused his position. The history is full of those abusive moments, and it is inexcusable, given his position and its self-proclaimed inter intercession, right with respect to allowing people to have a relationship with God, that such a body would, would ever engage in matters so heinous. Why? And so, given this apparent distortion of the history, 
that is very deep and long, and the fact that it is getting a lot of light shone on it, and has become undebatable in very recent times, and given the conditions the human race is now intentionally being forced to endure, such as an odd agenda, seems to be emerging worldwide, with manufactured pandemics as part of an apparent attempt to make us compliant probably to reduce our population substantially and enslave the remaining portion that survives. You will own nothing and be happy and we will control your life. Is it any wonder at this time that these entities that have been here for between 10 and say 30,000 years are getting comfortable with coming out more, getting comfortable in our environment more so than at any other time in the past and opposing that to a degree, is it any wonder that certain persons get a tour of and solid useful information from them regarding their world. And taking it a bit further, some of the messages and information conveyed are themselves distortions and lies, whether intentional or not. In my time looking into this and having experiences I've been lied to, I've been mistreated, I don't have any misperceptions or bias they are both good and bad, and I have seen and physically experienced both sides, and I convey this absolute reality with a, without apology. We have dominion, and they can be rebuked. I've done this successfully. Remember that. I know where we humans stand with respect to them. They come from us. That is now indisputable through genetic study. We preceded them, and we have now and always have dominion. They are but guests that were allowed to stay, but under certain conditions and agreements. Some of them have broken those agreements repeatedly and don't care. Some have tried to maintain their integrity and agreements, but their judgment overall as an entire population, as a hybrid species, does not even come close to ours. They resent us generally, sorry, they resent us generally and resent that they do not have free will and dominion as a whole. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know some of them are deserving of praise, but like the human race, and that is not because of human link genetics, they are fallible. Their core genetics are not of this world and do not mesh with other species of the world. Many are going to really get angry with me who think that they are the original species here, but they aren't. And the application of scientific methods has proven that. The historic record is clear that they came after us and that any genetics of ours they have come from us. We did not come from them. We need to get to the point of accepting the reality of the situation, come to grips with it, and respond accordingly. They can be highly deceitful, certainly not all, but enough, apparently. I don't know why they are compelled to present themselves in that way, other than their position relative to ours. The Nephilim, the giants, were dealt with, but read carefully how they were dealt with. Then understand that, sorry, then understand what that means and the implications. The fallen ones were dealt with. Again, Understand how and the implications. Get a real, historically based and grounded idea of what we humans are dealing with right now. Because anything short of that understanding is wide open to deception. The, Can the Kandahar giant in Afghanistan encountered by U.S. Special Forces during that conflict was real. It did happen. That was a giant, not a Sasquatch. So, the giants still exist. The dead giant was brought back to the U.S. It is probable that the specimen is being utilized for genetic experiments. Let that sink in. All these hybrids resulted from the fallen ones coming here and messing up with the planet. Sorry. All these hybrids resulted from the fallen ones coming here and messing up the planet with impunity and against the will of the of that entity that allowed them to come here under agreed conditions. They're only supposed to visit for a while. 
impart certain limited knowledge and then leave. But instead, it became clear through their egregious actions, sorry, egregious actions, <laughs> that the purpose has always been to displace humans here, to get rid of us. Maybe not entirely, but to become the ones with dominion, even though it is never even mentioned to them that this was a possibility. Everything we see today that is giant in size or physic physicality can walk on two legs and comes in varieties of animalistic or seemingly humanistic forms came directly from the fallen ones. It is stated in the records we have. And the genetic work done to date is backing that assertion. Gee, I wonder if that's why the Catholic Church intervened with Melba, Dr. Melba Ketchum. Do you think? Some of us who have buried ourselves in the grueling and wrenching historical studies work for decades and paid the price in doing so understand this. It was never fun, but it is rewarding, I think. I'm still debating that with myself. I'm almost too old to care anymore. And now reaching out to other historians who have also done their grueling work to get them onto the same page because they might not understand in depth the implications that those of us who have gone directly at the hybrid problem firsthand know. Their focus has been on other aspects of the records. I think it's important that they too see this for what it is and understand the movements and roles as they are developing. To me, this is critical. I'm also trying to reach out to the community most involved in this matter, mostly so that no one can say later that I didn't. I'm not expecting to change the majority's opinion on origins. I'm not a fool. Humans right now are weakened and vulnerable worldwide. We are, for better or worse, going through some sort of major transition that I think is unprecedented and epic in scale. We absolutely need to fight to keep our freedoms because everything about being a free human as opposed to being a slave is under severe attack right now. And there are entities wringing their hands in the wings, waiting for their opportunity to assert dominion. That is absolutely not theirs to have. We have to fight. Understanding everything I just conveyed in this writing is critical to that effort. It puts the matter into general historical perspective. It is not detailed, but it does not, doesn't have to be. There you go. <clears throat> now, some that might confuse some people. It might It might not, but one thing I do know for certain is a lot of people, not a lot, I don't know how many, but enough, will hear words spoken and only take out so many words from all of the words spoken. It's very frustrating witness. I guess maybe possibly I shouldn't even give that any energy, but it's it happens all the time. You know, as an example, I recently had somebody blow a gasket on me and freak out seeing I was anti-Christian and I was now suppressing people's speech and I didn't want people to say what I didn't want to hear or something. Absolutely blew a gasket and said, I'm leaving. You crossed over the dark side. And it was only because I said before, okay, Genesis, we've had it emailed in about 50 times a week. <laughs> right? That's all I said. It's been emailed in 50 times a week. If I read it 50 times a week, this place will go dead because it's repeating, repeat, like severely repeating. People's, and then people will say, well, you're still repeating. The same shit gets brought up and repeating in people's emails. Well, it has to. They're true experiences with the same type of being. Of course it's going to repeat. But who gives a shit? That's everybody's individual experience and they need to be heard. Period. Do we need to read the same pages out of a book daily? No, obviously. But that's an example of people hearing words and not hearing the rest of the words, like I just said. What I just said just now, still, somebody's going to go, you're suppressing our speech. Right? <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. But anyway, carrying on, I suggest that what I just read didn't come out too smooth enough and is confusing, please press rewind and, and listen to it again. All right? This man has been in touch with me for a while now, numerous times, and he has done some serious digging. 
very serious, open-minded digging. Like he said, he can't stop himself. And that's usually the people that get shit done, right? It's like it's like me with hunting. I can't stop. <laughs> and as soon as I know there's a huge black tail buck or something's here, I can't stop myself. I'll, I'll, I'll stay on it for for years until I make it happen. I, got, I can understand what he means. A lot of people have that in them with various topics. They can't stop themselves from getting to the end of that trail. So please listen to that again. And... Instead of just shaking your head and licking a window and going, oh, he's full of shit, back it up. Prove he's full of shit. Do some digging. You know how much digging that's going to be? But it's all the information's there. If you think he's full of shit, prove him wrong, bring receipts, and set us straight. Right? But I'll guarantee you, you're going to have to get your tongue unstuck from the window to make yourself go and do some own own due diligence and look into these these facts that were shared with us. All right. It's a frustrating ride, but if you listen to everyone, go with your gut. And if it's, if you feel motivated, go in, go down that hole. They just went down and, and see what they saw. Listen to what they heard, read what they read and use your open mind to come up with your own, your own, uh, ending. Sometimes my brain farts, right? Anyway, you cannot deny right now in the planet today, you cannot deny that the entire world is going through something, right? And so far, I don't see people dancing in the streets, throwing flower petals around because it's a, it's a good something. Do you? Do you see populations of communities across the planet dancing in the streets because they're so freaking happy and stupid? I'm so happy. These times are so great. I'm having such a good time. Oh my God, I could just live forever. My children are so lucky to be born right now. Said no one, but why not? It does make sense because this place is so, is so beautiful. It's mind bending. There's so, it's so easy to create food for humans it's ridiculous. Right? But for some reason, we're being convinced that, no, 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 you can't, no, no, you can't, no, you can't, no, you can't, and no, you can't. And if you don't do this, this is going to happen to you. And if you don't do this, this is going to happen to you, and this is going to happen to you. And if you further don't do what we want you to do, this is going to happen. That's what's, that is what is escalating today around the globe. There is no arguing it. If you can't see it, you're, you're probably what could be considered the living dead. Or your tongue has been stuck to the window for a long time and you can't get it unstuck, right? So what are you going to do about it? Right? What are you going to do about it? I suggest everybody get absolutely frustrated. I mean, let's face it, everybody's getting more uncomfortable by the week. Everybody's getting more uncomfortable and more uncomfortable and more uncomfortable. And they're trying to pretend they're not getting uncomfortable and they're trying to just go with it. It's not good. It's not good. Communities have to grow a set quick. Right? All right, I'll, I'll try to bite my lip. Let's get some more voices, voices heard. Robert, please send again. Please, please, please email us again. with Whatever you want, anytime you want. Please, appreciate you big time, man. It's funny how sometimes I say something and then read an email and then another one comes up that fits. This is titled, Developing the Sixth Sense We All Still Have. How handy is that? After that little spiel I just gave. Steve, first, one of the first videos I viewed was where you were sitting in a horse trailer and Mr. Macaroni is still with us. Oh, I was so sorry to hear about his passing. The memories never fade. The hurt will. Eventually. God bless in that regard. Appreciate the kind words. I did six years in the Marines back in 70 to 76. Sniper on a recon team. Needless to say, my skills were put to the test one too many times. My PTSD has decided. However, the hypervigilance will always remain which leads me to the sixth sense and how we can all realize our ability to use this invaluable tool. 
I worked as a clinical therapist and had the unique opportunity to work with court-ordered anger management clients and domestic violence offenders. Ooh. You can imagine the disdain that some of these gentlemen and ladies felt for me. However, most of my colleagues referred to me as a non-neurotypical. Most therapists referred people for antidepressants and other psychotropic drugs within the first few sessions. I did not. We all have a bag full of learned behavior that we march out for different situations as the stimulus requires. These offenders that I worked with and came to develop lifelong friendships with tended to get it when I helped them realize you have a choice in every situation in regard to how you respond. This is where the sixth sense awareness comes into play. There was a technique I taught them called the pause, i.e. when we are confronted with accusations or hostility, we tend to go there ourselves. The first step in this technique is to recognize your physical sign. You're getting angry. You may get warm, grit your teeth, clench your fists. It is always reflected in our physical self. If we let it go too long, we tend to throw things across the room, lash out at the persons who are, who's assailing us or even resort to physical abuse. The, the idea is pay attention to your physical sign. And before you go over the edge, tell the person that you need to take a pause, but you'll get back with them when you're calm. With that in mind, our bodies will tell us if something is up. It triggers our fight or flight response, and we need to pay close attention to that feeling. My clients had to fill out seven forms in regard to the pauses they experience out in the real world. In other words, they had to show me they were putting it into practice. Therein lies the key. We don't rely on our sixth sense for we have not been taught or shown or shown how to apply the technique. No, we haven't. And there's no question why. Now, I hope I'm making sense as this led me to work in the prison system here in Michigan. I had inmates who were six to nine months left on their sentence who wanted to be able to walk away from confrontation. I had a very high success rate in this arena. In all my experiences from the jungle of Southeast Asia to California to Michigan, and my myriad of other places has reinforced that, quote, we definitely have a sixth sense of awareness in all situations we find ourselves in, quote. End quote. Deepak, Deepak Chopra, in his book, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, speaks of how to put this into practice. In the fourth law called the Law of Karma, the practice is that if you have any question whatsoever about any decision, small or large, make the statement to yourself, quote, should I write to Steve Isdell about the sixth sense? Wait for just a moment, and if you feel a sense of comfort, move forward with that decision. If, on the other hand, if you feel a sense of dread or discomfort, it is the wrong decision. I've been practicing, practicing this since the early 90s and found that it has never led me down the wrong path. Never is a word I would not ever use in the human condition. In this case, however, I make the exception. The whole of the matter is putting into practice all the time. As a big game guide and hunter, no doubt, you spend a lot of time practicing your marksmanship skills. They certainly drilled brass into our heads at Edson Range at Camp Pendleton. We practice that over and over, and I still shoot today, and I breathe, relax, aim, slack, squeeze. And boom, still put my 308 in the black at 400 yards. In all the previous rambling, first, our sixth sense is as real as the air we breathe. Make no mistake. Number two, we would trust it more if we put it into constant practice about every aspect of our lives. Agreed. In regards to being in the woods and feeling a sense of dread, hypervigilance, accentuated hearing and vision, this is the sixth sense on steroids. I felt 
in country, I have felt it when in some of the prisons I worked in. I walked away from pretty good relationships when I felt I should. And the list goes on. So I went to school six years after high school, late in life, to get the credentials to do the work I did. And one more thing. When I was nine years old, I had my first experience with my sixth sense. I remember that moment in time vividly. I didn't really start to pay attention until, until again in the early 1990s. If you want to answer this email, feel free. I'd love to help with this effort for people to live free. Let me know. We could be closer than you know. One of your ardent fans. Bill Miles, a.k.a. Sergeant William R. Miles, USMC, 7076, ooh, effin' raw. Do I ever appreciate that email, man? Because you know if you've been following the channel, I don't even know when that was sent in. But if you know, sir, following this channel, that I am frustrated because I wish I could teach people to go with their gut. Teach the sixth sense, whatever, enhance it, you know what I mean? Because I know we all got it. And if we were taught that at a very young age, instead of having it erased intentionally, society wouldn't have any bullshit, would it? Bad players wouldn't be able to pull anything over society or community. It would be impossible, right? The very, very first time I felt my sixth sense my, was when I was about... I haven't a clue how old I was. 11? I don't know. My parents split up. <clears throat> I'm coming home after playing hockey behind the arena in the park lot with my friends after dinner. It's dark, kind of. And I came home, and I didn't have anybody taught me there was even bad adults in the world. I don't think by them at that time. And I, there's a strange car in front of my house. I'm like, huh? My mom, she was a beautiful woman. And she had next to no um, experience with men relationships she's my bad dad's there 21 or something like that anyway and i'm coming up the front porch stairs innocent kid didn't know shit to be scared of anybody or anything or bad evil nothing didn't know nothing absolute innocent kid walking up the stairs my hockey stick my street hockey stick and here's this man on the top of my stairs i guess he was saying goodbye to my mom he must stop by for a visit when i was playing hockey anyway Every single hair on my body turned to wire. I remember this moment like it happened two minutes ago. I remember every single feeling. I remember the shade of darkness, the shade of light. I remember the, what he was wearing. I remember what he, what he was wearing. I remember how he looked. I remember what foot was on what stair. Isn't that crazy? But most of all, I remember the sinking, sinking, dreadful uh how do i describe this feeling i wasn't scared it wasn't a fright it was more of a uh, just a dreadful dark all the hair on my body coming in obviously i don't know what the hell's going on but it was dark it was almost like um i don't know what it was like back then i wouldn't have a clue right but when i look back right now and i, and I review those feelings of my sixth sense screaming at me when I was so young is this was evil this now when I look back I know now this is pure evil and darkness is right here in my home <laughs> right and then years later it turns out that evil dark son of a bitch annihilated my family here you go almost 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 ended with me going in jail for I think they wanted to put me in they were attempting to put me in jail for five years for what I did to him as a result of self-defense. Anyway, there you go. That was my first experience with Sixth Sense gut instincts. Now, had I been taught about gut instincts as a child, I would have known right away to have fought like hell, voiced my, my uh, opinion, whatever to ensure that we fought back and didn't allow that dark evil being into our home or lives if i'd have known if i was taught about my sixth sense my gut instinct right i wonder how many people you see 
evil darkness threats to us would not have a chance, not a chance, if we were all taught to utilize, help mature and progress our sixth sense, our gut instincts. And it goes across the board. This whole existence, no matter what's run around the forest, who we run into, decisions you make in life, people you trust, people you allow to have influence on your existence, your community, your country, they wouldn't have a chance, right? I know I'm babbling, but this is a very, very important lesson and a very, very important topic because look where we are now across the board, around the globe, right? We've been conditioned to be a group of human beings who just lick windows, gaze at a stranger, and do what we're told. It's true. Anyway, I'm babbling, but I just, it's a, obviously the sixth sense of gut instinct is a very, it's a touch, not touchy, it's a sensitive subject for me because I realize the shit that I've lost in life due to not having that enhanced in me instead of being rubbed out of me, right? We are too compliant. We should not be, ever, right? We are not given this lifetime to be told what to do. We are definitely not supposed to follow stickers on the grocery store aisles telling us which way to walk. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? That's what it's come to? People actually stick, put stickers on a grocery store aisle to point to the dumbasses which way they're supposed to walk behind each other. As an easy example. But anyway, I'm babbling. Fired up. Fired up. You get what I'm talking about. Teach your children. Press rewind in this email and listen to this man speak. And takes, hopefully take something from it and apply it to your family. Your children right away. Right away. Okay. Who do we got? <laughs> What's next? Bigfoot family laughing while visiting Canada. That's a different type of title. Dear Steve, my name is John Telemans. I'm from Belgium, hence the crazy last name, LOL. You can use my name if you like. Used. Welcome to the club. So I was on a vacation in Canada visiting an old friend and his dad. We traveled up to a Verandre. We traveled up to La Verandre Wildlife Reserve. V-E-R-E-N-D-R-Y-E. -E. Wildlife Reserve. When we took a short food and pee break on the road close to the Dorval Lodge, 117 area, we decided to go pee off-road in the forest. And maybe two minutes in there, we heard some silly-sounding laughter. We thought some tourists were walking a trail, or hunters, or explorers, or just some pranksters. Didn't think too much of it as we were standing peeing there against this very broad and large tree. When all of a sudden, behind my friend, some bushes moved. And this huge, must have been up to 10 or 11 foot high, hairy creature came from behind those bushes. Very huge looking beast. My friend looked at me and froze up like he knew what I was looking at. We both zipped up and froze with hair standing up from the chills it gave us. I said quietly, do not turn around and come my way. So I grabbed his hand when he suddenly fainted. I didn't know what to do. As that tall effer started to come towards us, laughing. Yes, laughing. Then he stopped like maybe 20 feet away from us, turning its back towards those bushes it came from, signaling, waving its hand, when now other hairy creatures, smaller than itself, came out from hiding. It was so surreal, I thought I ended up in some movie or prank show. Anyway, the thing, it pointed at us and they all started, well, laughing, like almost human laughter. When my friend fainted, which scared me a lot, I was thinking, we are so dead. And as my friend came 
And as, and as my friend came by while I was slapping his face, he immediately started panicking, getting up and told me to run. All the while those creatures, oops, all the while, getting up and told me to run. All the while those creatures still just standing there, clear as day. So weird. I'll tell you, it was like being in a frickin' movie. Man, I thought we were dead by taking the action of running away, though. I looked over my shoulders a couple of times, but the big creatures just stood there, still pointing and laughing, with the smaller ones behind him. They all had our... Whoa. They all had a brownish collar. Oh, I think you meant color. All right, color. With grayish in it. Thick necks. Kind of small, conish heads compared to their bodies with tiny, beady eyes. Like the Ewoks from Star Wars. I couldn't make out any eye color. Sorry. I couldn't make any eye color out. Huge broad shoulders like a bodybuilder. Short hair, long arms, smaller legs. While we were running, I had such a weak feeling in my legs. And what seemed to be a numb mind. And everything was in slow motion. Adrenaline overload times 100. That was my words. <laughs> I know how it all sounds, but this ain't no joke. These beings are no joke. And as real as you and I. I didn't see no monkey folk, but large, thick, hairy humans. With a somewhat aboriginal looking face. With more hair on it. I want to say ape. Ape-like, but the intelligence just oozed from they making me wonder if these creatures are more people like anything else. Some lost civilization or travelers from beyond, perhaps. Anyway, when we got back to his dad's car, we never spoke about it until we got to the location. The only thing said was by his dad who asked us, You saw them, right? Which makes me think these creatures were always there, here in Canada. We both looked at each other, big-eyed, never uttering a single word until later that day while unpacking our gear at our hut. When I told them, I've had some experiences as a child living with my grandmother. Those were in the 80s and 90s. And in Luxembourg, Belgium, in 1991 as well. Hiking the woods on a tourist walk down the cave woods together with some type of UFO experience in Brussels. And that same place in Luxembourg. All in that same year in 91. Anywho, they looked at me both with a grin on their face like, yep. When my friend's dad told me these creatures are pretty much everywhere on the globe. But after Canada, which is around 2012, I had another experience in Peru. In 2016, visiting those old temples. That story might be for another time since this email is getting too long, lol. Anyway, another thing is that I can't stand the Bigfoot community and all these YouTube channels and show us and shows you talk about. What a bunch of dickweeds, right? Seeing Bigfoot in every dark spot in the trees or bushes or rocks, misguiding and lying to the rest of us out here. So I appreciate you for outing them. And all the things you do for us. Much love and respect to you. What? Much love and respect to you, Daniel Craig looking badass. <laughs> you do. If you don't, you know who he is. Look him up. You'll see what I mean. LOL. Keep putting the truth out there. Cheers, John. Alright, well maybe he looks like me. <laughs> Just kidding. John, this channel is nothing without people like you, man. Nothing. Alright? Absolutely nothing. I so appreciate you coming forward with that message, and it sure meshes up with the first long email, doesn't it? Doesn't it? How does it mesh up? Meaning by the actions of these beings. Right? Holy cow, my stomach is growling. That's quite the email, man, and, uh, Next time you get a chance, it's not too long. Send it all, all right? Don't leave anything out. I want to hear it. 
I'm going to finish off this one short one. It's titled Sasquatch Screams. Hello, Steve. My name is Morgan, and I'm from Somerset, Pennsylvania. About 10 years ago, I was at a friend's house with my wife, and him and his wife were sitting outside on his porch, which overlooked a large swamp bottom thicket. He had two Rottweilers that were professionally trained guard dogs, taught not to be afraid of absolutely nothing. Once before, about a 400-pound black bear and cub wandered through his yard. The dogs and the bear both had a stare down. It was almost like this massive bear was challenging the dogs. They went head to head with this massive bear and absolutely kicked its ass. They're insanely crazy dogs. Back to the night I was there, we were on the porch having a few beers, not drunk by any means. At about 10 o'clock at night, we heard a noise come from the woods. The only way I can describe it, it was a blood curdling scream slash howl slash roar. Like nothing any of us have ever heard before. We thought it had to have been a bear, and my friend made a joke that no bear will ever come around again with his dogs there. About that time, we looked over near the dog houses. Both Rottweilers were in their dog house, cuddled together, trembling. And we could hear them whining from 50 yards away on the porch. We never heard those that noise since. Anyway, thanks for all your amazing videos. I watch them daily. Stay safe, Morgan. Right on, Morgan. I'm glad you said it adds to the pile, right? It adds to the pile. Especially the pile of patterns. Keep them coming. I don't give a shit. I do not give a flying shit if your experience has been read word for word before, meaning you heard somebody else experience exactly like yours. I don't give a shit. I want to hear from you anyway. Okay? That goes to every single freaking human being out there. I want to hear from you. All right? I want you to share what you got. Share what you experienced. I want you to be brave and not fear anyone or anybody. Not to have ridicule in your fear ridicule. And I want you to get it out and share it. It's very, very important. All right? It's very, very important that everybody speaks freely and openly and honestly. I don't give a shit how crazy it sounds. You get it out. You get it to me and I'll get it shared word for word. It's very important. All right? Now, what I'm going to do, I'm a little fired up today, feeling a little more rested up. I, I usually exhaust myself. I know I shouldn't, but I do. I don't waste a second of daylight, and I and I go a little too hard, and I pay for it, and it catches up to me, and then I got to freaking mellow out. Yesterday was a pretty messed up afternoon. I couldn't do much anymore, but now I'm a little more rested, probably why I'm a little more fired up. And I'm absolutely losing my patience for any bullshit. I mean, I didn't have patience for bullshit before, but right now, I got I got no patience for the dark side. I got no patience for bullshit. I got no patience for evil, dark sons of bitches. When it comes to us, our community, the children, how we live, our freedom... Those sons of bitches that lie to us nonstop when it comes to this topic. Those dirty, filthy sons of bitches who try to stop honest people from speaking the truth when it comes to this topic and more. I got no, no patience. That's how I'm feeling today. And I hope, I hope my lack of patience for the dark, for the lying, is uh, spreading throughout all of you. I really sincerely hope that is true. Now, here we go. Moving along. All right. Before I go, what am I supposed to be doing here? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Uh, Sarah is going to be doing her shop for the hungry kids from with the membership money from this channel. So you know that. Um, what else? She still has a bunch of stuff in her store. Links below. She also mentioned she's been going back and forth with people about fishing with me this summer. It's getting close. Time to go. I never... I, I suck at marketing shit. We're getting the word out, but whatever. You want to come fishing with me this summer? You can contact her as well. Oh, <laughs> no. I think it's book at howtohunt.com, I think. See, I suck. Anyway, salmon and halibut, that's going to go on this summer. Uh, What else? What else? What else? What else? 
my Black Tail Hunter book went live. And uh, it's full of a whole shit pile of color photos. So um, I, I need to find another printer to maybe I get it cheaper. I don't know. That's more time, right? What else? What else? What else? I think that's about it for now. Uh, Nino and I are on for later on this afternoon. I'm going to see if I can squeeze in Darren, our friend Darren Clark, before then today as well. But right now, i got to get my ass in gear and get some other shit done, and then I come right back in here. I'm going to rock this out. Now, I, I rarely ever, ever say this, but you may want to share this video with some friends. All right? You may want to share this one. Possibly. And you probably don't want to share with any full-time window lickers. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right. Share my story at howtohunt.com. Get me what you know. Get it to me. I'm not scared of shit. I'll share word for word. I'd be sure that you are heard. You don't have to include your name, all right? You found your people, man. This is the truth army, the honest army, the brave army, the people. Let's turn this shit around, shall we?